Hey y'all, what's up? Chad Wright coming to you here once again on the channel, Team Righteous. And today we got the 2025 Toyota Camry XSE up here getting ready for its first oil change. I know, I know some of y'all seeing this video and it's thinking, man, this is awful early. I know you just got the car like a couple weeks ago and I did. Uh, I do do a lot of driving and I'm not waiting until 10,000 miles to do an oil change. Uh, to me, that's entirely too much uh, in the first place uh much less on the very first oil change that it's going to get so i drove the car with the oil that it come with and i drove it like for a week and didn't drive it that weekend and then drove it all the last week and drove it last weekend so uh it's had one good weekend put on it like i said i do ride share so i put a lot of miles on this thing but anyways i'm gonna show y'all right here i'm gonna hop in get a little messy up in here i've been working a little bit today but we have 2,251 miles on it. So anyways, I'm not gonna show y'all and bore you with how to change the oil in a car. It's just like every other car, super simple. But uh, I will show you a few things here in just one second. All right, so here we go. Just about ready to change the oil. So I already had the hood up a minute ago, got the car lifted up and everything ready to go. And we have because you can't get it anywhere else except for walmart mobile one zero w8 oil dealership does have zero w8 oil toyota brand but it's 20 dollars a quart and i paid 28 dollars for this entire five quarts here so it's actually more than four quarts as well you need four and a half anyway so it works perfect got the uh genuine toyota oil filter it's the same as last generation uh, Toyota Camry so nothing to worry about changing there so if you already got those kind of oil filters on the shelf you're good to go or if you got to go get one it's the same one uh, picked that up from the Toyota dealership they had the best deal on it and then one last thing so I will show you this because like I said it's about like all the other uh, cars when you change the oil nothing very difficult at all but there is one thing you got to have so you need uh, a 10 millimeter uh socket like small socket and ratchet nothing very big at all to be able to take this panel off down here i'll show it to you real quick all right so if you look like right in here this panel here is what's below the engine so you pull these four screws out and so they're 10 millimeter and they hold uh this panel here up and then right above this whenever i get to it here in a minute it will have the drain pan or the oil pan like right here and it'll have uh the oil filter will be somewhere up in here so we'll have to get to it uh get it off of there we should be able to uh get it done no problem and then we can uh get everything cleaned back up and just like that whoo got this old change knocked out man <laughs> ain't, it, ain't as young as i used to be uh climbing around up under here so this car right here is pretty low i've actually got a creeper down here uh to try to get up under there and i'm not fitting up under there with the creeper so uh i gotta get some uh, a different floor jack and jack stands to be able to raise the car up higher so i can get up under there with the creeper or just stay on the ground would be really nice if i had a lift that would uh, come in handy i got a motorcycle lift but that ain't doing me no good so anyways got the uh oil change and drain uh got our oil sample i'm going to send it off for an analysis uh to blackstone laboratories here and uh other than that put the oil back in it check the oil everything is good all the levels are good it's good and full so we're going to uh send uh send the oil off there to get an analysis on it Make sure everything in there is looking good because, you know, if I, if I need to tell the dealer or whatever, hey, we need to start looking at this thing is already looking bad from the beginning. I'm glad we changed the oil as early as we did. You know, hopefully we don't have to run into that. Uh, I know some of y'all see me with a white hat on out here changing oil. This is my old hat, so it's a little dirty, but not near as bad as, uh, not near as bad as it could be if I was, uh, if I was out here, if I was in my new one or whatever, I'd probably be pretty upset if I forgot about it. But uh, anyways, so we're gonna get this right here sent off though here in just a minute. 
and it should be a week or so before it comes back and then we'll finish the video there but y'all will see that in three two all right y'all so we're back here uh at the house at the laboratory as you would call it uh we have got the results back here from our uh test results that we got on our car or on the oil after we sent it off to blackstone labs and so i'm going to go over those results now so if you remember whenever I was at the end of the video before, whenever I was saying, hey, it'll probably be about a week to get these results back. Well, I was thinking it's gonna be about a week to get the results back, but it took a little bit longer than that. Uh, it took probably about three and a half weeks to get the results back. So uh, anyways, uh, a little bit longer than what I was thinking it was gonna be. And for most people, that probably wouldn't be a problem. But the problem for me is, is I change my oil every three weeks. So, and even sooner as it's going on right now. So I contacted them the first time. I'm like, cool. I was like, I'm needing these results. What's going on? You know, I said, I'm already changing my oil again. And they're like, oh, well, uh, you know, sometimes it takes us about three weeks. We're getting pretty backed up. They got a lot of business. They are very popular. So anyways, that's what's going on there uh, with that. But um, like I said, I've got the results back from the first one. I've actually already sent it off for the second one. You'll see that in a later video. Um, but this right here is uh, the results we got from our first oil change. So I'm gonna go over that right now. Uh, so as you can see here at the very top, it says Blackstone Laboratories, oil report, yada, yada. It's got the date that they done the report on, which was on the 11th. So that was like, you know, two to three days ago. Um, it's got my vehicle information, 2025 Camry. Actually, that's my unit ID. That's what I called it. I could have named it anything. You can name it whatever you want to name your car, your motorcycle, whatever. Um, mine is put 25 Camry. It's super simple. Uh, it's got the unit, which is a Toyota 2.5 liter four cylinder hybrid engine. It runs on gasoline. Uh, and then we have got, and I put down, so it, it says oil type and grade. So uh, on here right now, on the first one, it says engine oil because I didn't know anything about it. It's the break in oil. It's what they put in the, in the car from the factory. I would say break in oil, but it's not really break in oil. It's just the oil that they give you from the factory. And we don't know for sure if it's eight weight or not. It, it's uh, it's assumed to be that, but it may or may not be. Anyways, we've got gasoline, unleaded, uh, 2,251 miles. And uh, let's see here, what else we got? So we got my information here, which I've got that all blacked out. So y'all can't see it. Uh, but here is the comment. So this right here is what's uh, important for somebody like me, because I'm not an oil analysis guy. Like I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what late speed junior calls itself a tribologist or whatever it is, something like that over there, like a person who studies oil. That's not what I am. But this is great for people like that out there or people like me who really don't know exactly what all I'm looking at, but I got an idea of what I'm looking at here and it breaks it down for me. Uh, so we're going to read through the comments here though, but it says Chad. Uh, congrats on the new Camry. Its sample has high levels of wear metals and silicon, and these are common finds in a new engine's factory oil. The excess metal is from parts wearing in, silicon is from sealer and assembly lube, and this breaking material is harmless. Uh, with each oil, uh, with each oil change, the elements in bold should read closer to the universal averages. Those show typical results for this kind of 2.5 liter engine after about 7,500 miles uh, on the oil, and after break-in material is out of the system. Check back to look for progress and to see if fuel turns up again. It's a bit high at 2%. So uh, it's saying that we've got 2% fuel in the oil that I have. Uh, so that's probably, like I said, from the, from the engine breaking in, the, the ring's not sealing, you know, it's good when the engine's first breaking in, all that stuff, there's got a seal. So I have put together engines and stuff with motorcycles in the past. Uh, so I've dealt with that with there, with making sure that your ring seat in place uh, and they've got to be able to bond with the cylinders. Like that's something that they got to always do, especially when it's a brand new motor, uh, brand new cylinders, all that stuff, there's got to really bond together. And that's what you're kind of seeing here. So. Part of some of that there is where it, you know, maybe had a little bit of more fuel in the oil than what it should have is I would say possibly from uh, maybe a time or two, you know, I drove it a little bit harder or whatever, or maybe I idled a little bit too much whenever I drove it the first time. It could have been anything. Uh, but this is also funny to say 
the time that I got my best fuel mileage with this car. So anyways, we're gonna go over these results here that I'm gonna scroll down through here and let y'all see what we got going on. So again, we got uh, miles on the oil and miles on the unit, which is the vehicle. Uh, both of those are the same, 2,251 miles. Uh, sample date, so as you can see there, it was basically a month uh, that I got the results. Uh, I done the oil change, so the beginning of this video where y'all saw me doing that was on May the 14th, and they got to it by June the 11th. I think they got the package in on like June the uh, 17th is what it was. So it took from June the 17th until, or May the 17th, until June the 11th to be able to actually get me the results to me. Uh, so, anyway, and we had zero quarts of oil that we had to add. So, this is all the metals that are in there. You got aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, tin, uh, molybdenum, I can't really say that, nickel, manganese, silver, titanium, potassium, uh, boron, and silicon. Uh, so, as you're going through this right here, uh, you're going to see there's the things they marked in bold, uh, which are up that we're concerned about, but it's only there because we have, you know, a fresh motor. So it's got the break in. So this is the metals that are in there. Uh, so we got aluminum, which is nine, which they say it should be around four. And these are parts per million. So we have nine parts per million, uh, of aluminum versus the, I guess, millions of parts of oil that are in here so uh see so here iron is at 11 which should be around seven so aluminum's up five and let's see here iron is up four so iron is about 40 percent up i say aluminum is about 55 percent up uh copper copper was way up but you know that's from the break-in too um so anyways because copper should be around should be around one and we're at around a 50 so that's 50 times more than what it should be uh lead you know stuff like that there that comes from bearings and stuff as well so you're at a one versus a zero but that's gonna be the breaking in of the bearings you know uh and then we get into the uh the molly you know that comes from your rings and stuff and from other, other things but you're supposed to be right around a 112 and we're in 682 so but that's not one of the bold areas. So your bold numbers, I believe the four is a bold. I'm not sure if it is or not. Let's see, it's potassium. So that's, uh, the potassium is a detergent that's in the oil. And we're, should be at a one, we're at a four. I, I believe potassium is a detergent. Like I said, I'm not very, very great at reading these. And it's not really broken down as well as I would like for it to be on some of the stuff. Uh, but silicon, that's like they said, was from the uh assembly of the engine so should be around a 14 and we're at 189 so it's way up by well over you know um a thousand times pretty much or a thousand percent so but here's your uh detergents for uh for the oil so this is what the oil has got in it to help prevent uh build up and stuff like that there in the engine uh so sodium it's one of those you're at a nine, which should be at a nine. Uh, calcium, we're at 1295. Generally, won't be around 1202. So, we're in that range. So, it's not very far off. These numbers aren't very far off when you go to this right here. Uh, magnesium's a little bit further down than where it should be. So, 550 versus 485. Um, let's see your phosphorus. And this right here is like ZDDP is uh, zinc and phosphorus. Phosphorus. So these two right here usually generally go together, and there's like a certain limit to the amount that can be in there um, because you don't want it to stop up the catalytic converter. So I do know by this right here, uh, ZDDP is bad about stopping up the converter if you got too much in there. Uh, but yeah, so we're at 648 versus 649, and then we're at 757 for the zinc versus 735. So those numbers there are right on, you know, where they need to be at. Um, and then we got barium, which is at four, uh, which should be a zero. Um, that's again, something else. I'm not really sure what barium is and what it does. Uh, and then you get down here at the bottom and then it goes over your viscosity. So this engine, as we know from uh, where the sticker is on the, up under the hood in the book and, there, and the owner's manual and everything too, 
So they're supposed to be running 0W8, uh, which is a super, super low viscous oil or a thin oil, as some people will call it. Uh, so this right here is where they test the viscosity of it by heating it up to 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so the top one, we're not really too concerned about it as much, uh, just the number that we're going by. But the lower one here is, um, I can't remember what the word is called, but CST viscosity uh, at 100 degrees Celsius is 5.11. Um, that would be probably on par for a 0W8, maybe a 0W12 to start with. So maybe they went with a 0W12 to begin with, uh, and then we go to a 0W8 once we change the oil. Uh, and we'll find those results out once we get that uh, results back here in probably about another three weeks. Uh, but anyway, so our flashpoint, this is how they find out how much fuel is in the oil. So they heat the oil up and... It should be hotter than 385 degrees before it ignites on fire. And it actually ignited on fire right around 345 degrees. So with that, that's how they know how much fuel was in there. So it had like 2% fuel in the oil. And then we check it here below, as you can see, 0% antifreeze, 0% water, and 0.1% insolubles, uh, which that should be less than 0.6%. So... What do we learn from uh, what do we learn from these results here? Well, so many people, and I, I still read this every day. Like, there's tons of videos out there now from, say, the Car Care Nut. Uh, and he's done tons of videos telling people for years, like, do not wait ten thousand miles to change your oil. It's very, very unsensible. He's, I don't care what the manual says. He said, I'm a certified tech. This is what I'm telling you is going on with your engine. If you change oil every 10,000 miles, it's going to wear out faster. It's a guaranteed thing. It's just going to happen. So Toyota says you can go 10,000 miles in between oil changes. But they also say at that 10,000 miles, well, let's see if you drove 10,000 miles of nothing but highway. So basically, if you drove, say, you know, to, to work, some people work like where I live at. So some people drive, say, 45 minutes to an hour away to go to work in Decatur. And, and then they drive back. So they'd make that trip every single day. Like if that's the trip that you made every single day, maybe going 10,000 miles would be okay. If that's what your trip was, that's generally what you've done in the car, maybe that's okay. Um, then, then you got uh, people like me though, who I drive a lot of miles every single week and it racks up so fast. Most people would think that I was driving on the highway so much with as fast as my miles rack up. But I'm really not. Like I said, so much of mine is in the city because I do a lot of ride share driving. That's where you're going to want to change your oil closer to 5,000 miles. Now, generally for me, it's anything basically every three weeks. Uh, it's it's usually going to be less than 6,000 miles, but it may hit 6,000 miles. Sometimes I may actually drive 2,000 miles a week for three weeks in a row, and it might get to 6,000 miles by the time I get my oil changed. Uh, but generally, it's not going to. Uh, generally, I'm going to be probably closer to 5,000 miles in that three week range, but it can always vary. It just depends on what I do and what's going on. But anyways, uh, the reason why we changed the oil so soon here, 2,251 miles, I honestly would have changed it sooner. If I would have changed it closer to 1,000 or 1,500 miles, uh, but the way I drove was I drove say five, 600 miles the first week, but I didn't drive the car that first weekend. And then the next week I drove it some more, well, I just, so probably five to 600 miles in the first, you know, two weeks, but not driving the first weekend. Uh, and then the second weekend, once I went out with it, which was where this, these miles come from, um, I ended up with 2,251 miles by the time I got my old change done. So that's the only reason why I put as many miles I did on it then. And then the next old change came up, which like I said, that's in a later video, but I'm at 6,600 miles by the time I done the second old change. So so I put another 4,400 miles on that oil in two weeks. So it went from, you know, 2,251 miles in like say, you know, two weeks of driving normal miles and stuff like that there and then one weekend. And then the next one came two weeks later, you know, I put 4,400 miles in two weeks. So sometimes I can drive more than 2,000 miles in a week. It just kind of varies for me. But anyways, 
I wanted to get the metal out. Like I knew there's metal in this oil. Uh, and like I said, as you can see from the results, there's metal in the oil. So we want to get that out. Like there's so many people out there that are like, oh, well, it's Toyota. Why don't you change the oil that soon? <clears throat> then they would just do it. You know, they would, you know, offer you your first oil change at 3,000 miles instead of waiting 10,000 miles. Well, Toyota doesn't care, you know, like about that with there. They know it's going to get through the warranty time and that's all they're concerned about. Like that's the, what they're concerned about. Their bottom dollar is what they're concerned about. So the reason why they do 10,000 mile oil changes is because it makes the cost of ownership look like it's less whenever you have to change the oil, say in a hundred thousand miles, you feel like I changed the oil 10 times where, you know, a lot of people like me are going to change it 20 times. Or if some people like the old school way where it was every 3000 miles, you would change it 33 times in that, in that time. So that's what they're looking at is trying to make it appear that the cost of ownership is less. And yes, it's probably, it's definitely going to make it through, you know, probably 30, 40,000 miles on those old changes, doing it every 10,000. It's probably going to make it past, well past 100,000 miles, which is going to be well past the warranty, warranty time. But that's when it's going to start to have more issues is later on down the line. Because the more oil breaks down, the more it's fuel in the oil and, and, and other things or whatever, the more you drive it longer and then you let that fuel sit. And when the oil is sitting with fuel in it, that's when it breaks down the oil and makes it not do the job that it's meant to do. So anyways, I know this video is starting to go long now because I'm starting to explain a lot of things and going into a lot of stuff, but I just wanted the people to understand the reason why I and many other people that build engines and work on cars and work on motorcycles change oil very early on on motorcycles it was never even nowhere near this long right here it was 100 miles like and maybe that there was a bit excessive but you know and we didn't do oil analysis and stuff like that there when we built engines on motorcycles but we wanted to make sure that we got uh you know we want to make sure that we got all that stuff there flushed out of there like i said we built engines and stuff in house and everything and then we would get it run it break it in and as soon as it was broke in, you know, we would go through, we didn't even break it in like most people do cars and stuff or whatever. We would do 10 heat cycles and then that was it. Like it was broke in and then it was on the dyno and we would do, you know, whatever dyno tuning we had to do, tune the engine, get it ready to go. And then we would immediately change the oil, change the filter, fresh oil, fresh filter in there. It's good to go. And then we would tell them, hey, do a thousand miles, do one more oil change, and then you're back to normal. So it was even way more excessive than this right here was. But these right here were engines that we were building for people to go out there and beat the crap out of. It was race bike stuff. So it was probably a little bit more cautious on our end to make sure whatever we sent out, we was knew, knew that it was going to be well taken care of and last them as long as it can for something that you're racing. This right here, this is something that I know it's got to last for me for hundreds of thousands of miles. Like I plan to have this car for at least at least until i pay it off and that's seven years and three months so you know it is say if i drive ninety thousand miles a year at this rate right here and and it could be more of course but generally i'm gonna say i'm probably gonna take some weeks off and take some days off and stuff but if i've done ninety thousand miles a year in seven years that's six hundred and thirty thousand miles in seven years so I want this engine to last at least that long. And I know Toyotas are known for that. And that's the reason why I got one, but they only do that when you really, really take care of them well. And that's what's super important is take care of the engine, take care of the transmission services when they need to be done and stay on top of that stuff. Uh, and, and the oil for these things right here really isn't that expensive, especially whenever you do it yourself. Um, so if you do your own oil changes, like the oil is like 27 bucks, Filters another seven, so we're at 34 bucks, 35 bucks. So if you consider, you know, your time to do it or whatever, another 30 minutes, I mean, there's another, you know, 10 bucks or whatever, 20 bucks. I mean, so you're looking at 35, 40 bucks to do it. And if you was to take it to a Walmart or whatever, they'll do it for like 55 bucks. Like it's not very hard to do an oil change. Like as much as like Walmart's probably not the greatest place to work on your car at, they can change your oil. Just make sure they don't over tighten the filter and stuff in the plugs because they're bad about doing that sometimes. But anyways, I'm going to jump off of here. Don't want to keep this running too much longer, but I appreciate all y'all. Appreciate all the likes, all the subscribes that we've got. And if you can, please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, 
we are as of right now four we are four um subscribes away from hitting 2000 so let me stop this video over here it's been going in the background the whole time uh but anyways we are four uh subscriptions away from hitting 2000 so super proud moment i remember it wasn't it was a little over a year ago it's probably man, probably a year and a half ago now i want to say it was the end of 2022 uh whenever i was hitting a thousand and man it was like it was something i was really looking forward to and then just so much hit me with life and with what was going on in the shop and the reason why we're not there anymore uh, and that was all kind of starting to build up like right after that. Like once we got to that moment, like it just got tough. And so a lot of my, a lot of my content died away and I'm not sure which, really which way this channel is still going to go. I'm going to keep trying to, you know, bring this kind of information to you here, but we got some other plans too. I've been talking to some people about some things I want to do. So hopefully we can bring that to you as well. But anyways, we're going to jump off of here. Appreciate all y'all. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Hope y'all kind of like the background we got going on here. Hope you like this kind of information that we're bringing to you. Uh, definitely looking to bring some more to you uh, in the future from the next oil change, which has already been done. I'm looking to do the third one coming up next week. Uh, and like I said, it'll be a little bit shorter video though. I won't ramble on as much about it because we'll kind of be going over the same things. Uh, but anyways, we'll just bring that to you all here probably in about another three to four weeks though once we get those results back as well. So appreciate all y'all. Have a good one. It's all fun and games jokes on social media but this shit is dangerous <laughs>